Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be giving you 10 tips for if you are new to Time Princess. I've been receiving comments on my channel, people saying that they're new and that my videos helped out a lot. So I figured to make a beginner's video so I, you can have some tips so you don't make the same mistakes that I did when I just started on Time Princess. Maybe you are new, but maybe these tips will still help you. I also have some more in-depth guides up on my channel like about the fancy fair societies and about the traveler sprint. Check them out on the, my playlist on my channel or just search on beginner guides hamster products and you will find those without further ado let's start with number one spin-offs Spinners are a great way to get more resources and book tickets. Most of all, to kind of get you started on getting more stories at the same time. That's what I struggled with in the beginning. My recommendation here is reading the spin-offs or DLCs because pretty much straight out, you can always come back and really read them, but now you can just skip through them. The only thing with these spin-offs is that most of them have a timer on it per level. So I just finished number two on general meow spin-off and it will take me 20 hours to get to the next level or you can pay diamonds do not do this. You are not in a rush. I would recommend reading all the DLC or like speed reading them. Queen Marie will probably be one of the first stories you're going to be reading. And this one has a ton of spin-offs. So if you have finished this one reading and you want to read this spin-off, I would say do these first so you get a bunch of book tickets or like do them at the same time. Because not only will this include your whole reading experience, but this will also give you a bunch of materials that are not that difficult to gather, especially if it's in the same story that you've been reading. Uh, do not forget about DLCs. Just naming a quick example, Faded Encounter costs 15 tickets to unlock and completing it fully on 100% perfect scores. It will give you 27 tickets in return, so just keep that in mind. Number two is find a society that is active. This is such an important part. Finding a society where all the members are playing daily, it makes such a difference in what you get back. For example, you have the quest wall, which for me is the most important because depending on how many people fill in the quest for their daily mission, the higher the list will go and the more resources you will get back so if more people play daily and get everything to the max the more you will get back and i've noticed since i changed societies about like two months ago i just got so many more diamonds and stamina and i've really needed that boost lately since they've been raising the prices so i recommend finding one if you are new however you might find that you don't have that many items yet you may not be that valuable to like bigger societies but make sure you're at least in one that's active and then later on you can find a society that's very competitive as well with some high level play because they might not take you in the beginning. They might, they might not. Who knows? You can always try. I have a society guide up on my channel. I would recommend you checking that out if you want to know more about how the society works. Another huge perk about the new Twilight Bloom and if you are in an active society is the rewards you get for being in a server. So currently my server or my society is on level three for this batch and the rewards we get after one week is 2000 diamonds, which is insane. Just getting free diamonds for just being in an active server. Same goes for the mini games often have a leaderboard currently it is the kitty terror mini game that doesn't have any society but like the fruit game the fruit shoot mini game has a society ranking where you can even get items or a profile picture banner and also a bunch of diamonds and rewards so i really recommend finding that in my diamond game video i already mentioned it but i figured to mention it again sharing three times a day will give you 30 diamonds as you can see i'm just pressing on share three times you just do this over your profile and you get 30 diamonds that's it it's that easy it really adds up if you do the 30 every day so please do not forget to do this this will be a great hand later on and now on to tip number four i would say log in twice a day this is mainly to send out your cats. I just woke up, so I, they've been back for a minute, but send out your cats. I always send them out for eight hours. Sending out for two, four, or eight is not going to make a difference in the rewards they bring back, so you might as well just do it the longest time. So when you wake up, and then in the evening, you can come back and send them out again so you can sleep when they're still out. Same goes for your society quest. You can see if you can fill up any last items that you need, or if there's an event running here, you can claim it every six hours even, so that would be three times a day, but an average of twice a day of login, I think, would be maximize the most of your playtime. And on to tip number five. Tip number five is about relics. I personally don't use relic as much because I am at this point that I'm mostly always past a level so I don't know too much about it but I would say definitely prioritize on the star level for your relics 
starting off you won't have that many so i would say just go for what you need but after a few stories you, they're gonna pile on pretty quickly because each story has around two to three relics each so if you're gonna be getting a bunch of new stories you will need more so in the beginning you'll find that whatever tag you need you can upgrade and i would recommend doing so but after that only from like star level four at least i would say before you start adding up because trying to get every relic to level 20 or higher is gonna cost you a lot of resources you might want to save for the future for example i have my gabrielle to level 19 i won't be able to do that with everything that i have so that's something to keep in mind moving on straight to tip number six for also relics is saving the relic charts so a relic chart is one of those little puzzle pieces you get for a certain relic and you can use them either to enhance or to awaken you will need 10 to awaken a relic and they have to be level 50 which would come in handy if you would have the upgrade materials i would say awaken over enhance because because taking Gabriella as an example, it will add it will add the level from five to six, and it will add the seventeen percent score to twenty one. Would be nice, but it's not much of a difference. And if I were to awaken it, the score would go up with two thousand, and that is a great difference. Also, the picture will change on her photo card, which is kind of cool. So personally, I would recommend saving them up. The way you can get these is by leveling up characters. After you get the relic once from the companion, you will get relics after up to level twenty. You will have enough level 20 companion is really high it's gonna take you a while but just wait for a minute also you can get them from lucky jerry as well and you will find these rare companion tokens you can use and, and then you will get uh, more charge as well but these will be random so again it's gonna take you a while to get 10 of each it's by going into your items and to go to the last tab and then here you can see i have enough to get bremble crown to the upgrade so let's do that right now she's currently level four they have to be level 50 and and you need 150 coins so this is gonna take a lot so let's just get her to level 50 right now i got her to level 51 even and as you can see it cost a little bit of a drain in my resources as well but that's okay so let's awaken it for 150 000. and this is what she looks like now and now she has a pretty good score of three and a half thousand so that's how relic and relic charts work on to number seven this is about the time academy this recently only got added and this is also a great way to boost your score but at the same time it's a very very expensive so the way this works is that it's segmented in different parts and you will have to use these little spoolies to upgrade it and then after a while you'll have to activate to get the new level not only will this cost a lot of these spindle materials but it will also cost you a lot of diamonds to get to the next level and i'm saying if you're new just skip on this like you don't need this because to get these spindles you either use it from the fashion pass or magic recycling and i wouldn't say that you want to recycle your items here over the way you can do with lovecraft but with lovecraft you can actually get more resources you can use in game maybe if you're stuck on a level i would say try, try to get the first level in but i would say that it's not worth spending your diamonds even i think this is too expensive so i'm not really like investing in here we have the fashion lab however which is a great way to upgrade your level and your overall score i would say focus on the categories you use always like hair hats dresses shoes socks instead of the maybe the pants or skirts because you don't always use it's like i use this dress way more than i use the top that's why i upgraded this way more and this is what you get from being in an active society as well so this is way more beginner friendly as well since this won't cost you as much materials the same for this you basically gain this over time by just playing and exchanging with your items for lovecraft as well Tip number eight no gifts under three stars so all the gifts have three levels you have three star gifts two level star and one star gift these will all cost the same to craft so it will cost two materials and 200 coins however giving companions one level or two level gifts it's just not beneficial and i would really recommend just skipping on those like all together you might get them from other fans it's fine but i would say it's not worth your resource or materials even if you're short on a three star material it's not worth it because it's gonna cost you more in the long run well you can use these other materials better in either your society or in other things and the same is always give your companions what they like the most just go mysterious food and then give them the three star option don't go any lower than that tip number nine is for the cheapest way to get the most stamina because you will need a lot if you're gonna read all the stories i would say definitely watch your ads five times a day i know it's a lot i know it's boring i know but you don't only get 25 stamina you will also get 50 
diamonds and 5,000 coins and you will need that for crafting as well. So it's just a great way to get free resources, basically. It's only going to take you five minutes a day, so I really recommend you doing this. Also, you can buy stamina here on the top. It's 35 diamonds for 25 and you can buy this five times a day, but every time you buy this, it will get more expensive. So the value here for 25 stamina is 1.4 diamond per one stamina, which is quite expensive, but it's basically the cheapest option right now. Then you also have the stamina card, which I buy basically weekly and it is 300 diamonds and I definitely do think this is worth, worth your diamonds over for example the time academy which is the same price you instantly get 150 and then daily for a full six days after you will get also 50 and this comes down to 0 0.6 diamond per stamina and definitely the cheapest option you can get so and number 10 my biggest tip do not spend any of your stamina if it's not on a Saturday Saturday is the double encounters weekend I currently have 10,000 stamina I do not spend it if it's not on Saturday so the way that works is you get double the item that you're going for but you also get double experience and double the coins which will make you end level faster get you more coins and just everything you need more this game is really expensive on the stamina consumption so you will really need that and that's what I didn't do this for the first year and a half of playing this game or something like that and if I did I would have had way more stuff by now even though I'm already pretty caught up but if you're playing right now I would definitely say stop spending only do it on the weekends same as for the encounter boxes that you get from your companions only really open these on the weekends because you get stamina from them as well I can't press enough if you're playing you want to read the story I get it but if you're stuck on having to craft a dress I would say wait until the weekend because it really adds up and it's gonna get so expensive this is definitely my biggest tip if you're new and you didn't notice yet this is gonna be like a game changer because you're gonna get so much more out of what you already have if you're scared that the value is not the same I know lower levels you don't even have the 200 stamina cap it is more resourceful to save the stamina than spend it to zero and then wait it to recharge I know it feels like it but on the weekend because you get the double stuff it's not only less stressful that you don't have to log in constantly but you still get the double the stuff it wouldn't be worth the hassle to keep logging in and spending it to make sure that it you get like free stamina back it's not worth it save your stamina spend it on the right day so this was my video thank you all so much for watching i hope this video was very helpful at least for the beginners under us i hope you now maybe get a little bit more resourceful in the game and a little bit more out of your gameplay because i know how expensive this game can get especially for newer players thank you all so much for watching if you want to see another tips video i might make another one in the future and with that being said i hope hope you all have a great day and i'll see you in the next one bye